Welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. And in this video, we will be continuing our discussion of reinsurance. So in the previous session, we looked at occurrence towers. And in this session, we're going to be showing how to layer out a tower and how to apply aggregate covers in addition to occurrence covers. And I've just kept the same book that we had before. So hopefully you're following this along. Uh, just to review quickly, we built a gross portfolio, 40 claims, 10,000 X is zero limit, log normal severity with a mean of 50 and a CV of four, mixed gamma frequency. We updated that with a bucket size of a half. Uh, the expected loss is about 2,000 on a gross basis, 1992. Uh, we then applied uh, a reinsurance to that to essentially buy uh, the retention down to 500,000. We did that in four layers, 50% part of 500x500, 90% uh, of share of, sorry, uh, of a million x a million or 1,000x1,000, 95 of 3x of 2, and then 100% of 5x of 5. That lowered the expected loss from 1992 to 1762, lowered the coefficient of variation from 64% on a gross basis to 46% on a net basis. Uh, we looked at a couple of uh, data frames of statistics so the reinsurance occurrence layer data frame uh, shows you this difference 1992 to 1762 is, is 230 this is how it layers out across the four layers that we looked at uh, on a seeded basis this is net of each layer uh, we've got the claim count expected claim count to each layer percent of loss in each layer uh, we also have the audit data frame uh, we have uh, log density uh, on a subject net and gross basis and the probability functions. Um, we can, in, if instead of saying occurrence net of, we say occurrence seeded two, we can build the seeded distribution. So that has a mean of 230. Uh, we then created a little dictionary with the three and a data frame that showed some quantiles off there that could potentially be used for uh, capital uh, or asset uh, requirements, uh, computed the reduction uh, that accrued from the uh, per occurrence tower. So now I want to show you just quickly, uh, uh, there's a shorthand if you're interested in doing a layering like this, but you don't want to necessarily, you know, you're at the exploratory phase rather than the uh, kind of pricing phase and you just want to get an idea of how the losses layer out. There's a little shorthand for that. Um, so if we just uh, copy this uh, tower here, so we're going to start the new materials at this point. Uh, let's just call this tower and call this tower here and uh, tower. Okay, so rather than putting in the particular layers, what we can do as a shorthand is just uh, put in the breakpoints that we're interested in. So let's say we're interested in evaluating the first 250, 250x250, and then uh, you know, 500x500 takes us to a million, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, maybe uh, 7,500, and then up to the top of the program at uh, 10 million, like so. Okay, so if we do that, execute that, so that all uh, works out fine. Um, it doesn't actually matter whether you do uh, seeded to or net of. Um, in e either case, this typically does the whole program. So one of those two will be zero, and one of them will be everything, because we're really just interested in in the layers. So if we do tower reinsurance and we're interested in the occurrence layer uh, data frame, uh, we look at that. That shows you how this program uh, layers out. So it gives you a full layering of the 1992 expected loss. So uh, 1,452 or 73% of it is in the first 250. 220 of it is then in the next 250, so about 11%. 154 is in the 500x500, so 7.7%, and so forth up the up the tower. Um, so you've got your percent seeded to the layer, you've got the average severity in the layer, uh, you've got your claim counts into the layer, and uh, you've got your coefficient of variation of loss in the layer as well. So this can be a, a helpful exhibit to look at um, if you're you're thinking of structuring this and you're just sort of wondering where uh, reasonable breakpoints would be for this program. Uh, and I'd note here the sort of rules of thumb that underwriters sometimes have. There's a 50% rule of thumb that says in uh, balanced layers like, you know, 250x250, 500x500, 
typically the losses are, are sort of more more like sort of three quarters to about the same but then um you get this sort of fall off of a 50 percent factor sometimes so you can see the losses in a mil x2 is 1.6 percent is about a third of the losses in a mil x a mil and then three the the one x of uh three the losses are 0.8 which is about 50 percent of the prior layer and then one x of four 50 percent of the prior layer so there's some rules of thumb that you can look at i like that that are sometimes uh, useful all right what i want to do now then is to actually uh make uh some make a a let's uh, apply an aggregate program so we're going to make another uh net view i'll call this net uh call this net of ag let's say um we'll call it net three and net three and we want to continue here to say this is going to be net of we're off the net view and when you overlay aggregate uh, reinsurance, you need to put that clause after the frequency because you need to know what the frequency is in order to get to aggregate reinsurance. So we're going to do aggregate as the keyword uh, net of. And then what is the, the layer that we want? Well, there's a neat little trick that we can play here. Often these layers are calibrated in terms of percentile points of the underlying distribution. We've already got the net of occurrence distribution. It's a net two. We've already uh, computed that in the previous session. So let's say we wanted to buy uh, or think about a program that was a 90% share of buying from the 80th percentile up to the 99th percentile. So we can use the handy uh, Python F strings to do that and put in the actual computation. So a net two Q of 99 is going to be the top of the program um so if we wanted it to attach at the 80th percentile uh we would do something like this the difference there would be the uh limit and that would be excess of this okay so remember how f strings work anything that's in uh curly parens like this gets evaluated and substituted into the string as a, a number so if we do this and let's just run that and then let's just, for comparison purposes, pull up uh, net two, which was our prior. Okay, and then we should uh, we should look at these numbers as well, so we know roughly what we're buying here. Um, so this program is going to be it's going to buy us. Uh, let's just do this. It's going to buy a limit of um, sixteen. Uh, 94 it's going to attach at 2397 and it's going to exhaust at about uh, 4100 right and about 1700 of limit into that layer and it's going to have about a one in five chance of attaching so let's look at uh, the net three net of that again remember the second column here the numerical computation is the net and the error isn't really the error it's the impact of uh, reinsurance so with net two uh, we saw that that decreased severity from 49.8 to 44 with the coal parts, which was about 11% reduction in severity. And then if there's no other reinsurance, our net of occurrence, 70, 1762 expected loss, also down 11.6%. Uh, but now we're adding this occurrence layer on top, and we see the net loss has now come down uh, from 1762 to uh, 1657, so about another 100 of uh, loss reduction. So now we've seeded away about 17% of our ground up loss. The impact on the CV is quite marked, right? The CV here, 46% is now down to 37%. And the skewness has actually gone uh, negative uh, because of the way that distribution is, uh, is going to look. Uh, we also had, uh, remember, our uh, DF data frame with the various percentiles. So we can add to that, uh, let's say, net of the aggregate structure um so that's going to be a net three q of p for uh p in p's and let's look at that okay so we're seeing here uh reduction from the net down net of occurrence say 44 down to uh, 28 so what's that about 1600 that is the you know the limit that we've got here um, you're, you're getting that effect once you go above the, the 99th percentile, uh, somewhat less uh, reduction here. Um, and then we can uh, also put in um, the, uh, the reduction 
Um, let's see, uh, we had the, the code here, we want this. Um, so we want to just copy that down um, here. So we will do a total reduction. And that's going to be the net of the aggregate minus uh, the gross there. So now we're seeing what the uh, total reduction is. Um, previously, we had this reduction as net of aggregate, and now net of aggregate and occurrence um, 64. Sorry, this is net of occurrence. This is net of them both. So, you know, very substantial reductions in the out uh, PML forms. Um, it's always good to visualize this um, so we can, uh, again, go back to the density DF data frame. We've got P total on there, which is our probability mass function. Um, so let's print plot those out for A, A net 2, which is our net of occurrence, and A net 3, which is net of occurrence and uh, aggregate. Let's do x dot density uh, DF dot P total dot plot. Okay, so that will plot uh, that. We should give it a name so we can uh, label it. So all these uh, aggregate objects, they have a, a name attribute. That's why you bother putting in uh, the, the name that, that goes here. Um, and so let's do that. And uh, let's uh, just turn on the legend. This is all sort of raw um, matplotlib at this point. Um, sorry, for x in. So um, x.df is a pandas data frame. This is a series, and then the plot series have a plot method, and the plot method returns a matplotlib axis element, which then has things that we can do with it. Okay, so this is our view of uh, the gross, uh, the net of occurrence, which is net two, and the net of the aggregate. Uh, we might want to just sort of spruce that up a bit. So um, let's change the y limit to be. Uh, save from uh, minus 0.12341 to 0 0.04. Uh, so we cut that to spike off. That's that's where the aggregate program attaches. And there's obviously a, you know there's a lot of lot of limit there. We don't want to have our picture distorted by that. And uh, our x limit we can use um, quantiles of the gross distribution for that. So maybe let's do that out to the one in a thousand loss and uh, That'll kind of zoom us in a little bit and we get a clearer picture of what's going on. So you see the um, net of occurrence is very good on the, the sort of out tail here, but the aggregate really takes the top off the distribution. And uh, once you get beyond the uh, uh, limit of that, you've, you've really lowered your probabilities by basically uh, sort of two orders of magnitude uh, because you've attached up to the 99th percentile. And we can do a few more. I mean, this is really uh, not aggregate. It's just sort of, uh, messing with um, uh, matplotlib, but uh, you know if we want to do y scale equals log is always uh, a good thing to look at um, to see the log um, densities, and you know uh, that uh, kind of clearly shows here the difference between the gross, which is um, driven by that very thick log normal tail, um, out at least through ten thousand. Thereafter, it'll be truncated because it becomes sort of Poisson. Um, net is uh, driven by the Poisson, much, much uh, thinner tailed. And then you're getting a reduction here of basically an order of magnitude. You can see on the log scale, the distance uh, between these two lines is, is basically an order of magnitude because you're buying up to the uh, 99th uh, percentile loss. So that's just a, a quick tour through applying um, occurrence and aggregate uh, reinsurance. The Remember, the occurrence clause comes um, before frequency, the aggregate clause comes after frequency. You can do any of the combinations you want of uh, net of and seeded of. So, um, for example, if you did seeded of to the occurrence program and then put a, um, you could put an aggregate limit on the session. So that would be a way that you could model uh, reinstatements to a single or multiple uh, layers using this. So the structure is uh, really quite, uh, quite flexible. So I will uh, stop there for today. Thank you.